killing of a young pregnant Amish woman in her home in northwestern Pennsylvania. This killing has absolutely shaken the Amish community. The Amish, descendants of European settlers, have crafted a life that seems plucked from the pages of history. Their simple attire, modest homes, and steadfast faith have fascinated outsiders for generations. But beneath the quaint facade lies a community bound by strict rules and age-old traditions. From courtship rituals to gender roles, every aspect of Amish life is carefully orchestrated. Yet, hidden behind their plain clothes and picturesque farms, a shocking truth has been concealed for nearly a century. Brace yourself. The Amish secret that's been under wraps for 90 years is finally about to be unveiled. Number 20. Faceless Toys Walk into an Amish home, and you might notice something peculiar about the children's toys. They have no faces. These handmade dolls and figurines come without eyes, noses, or mouths. Far from a simple oversight, this design is loaded with cultural significance. In the Amish world, where simplicity and humility are cornerstones of daily life, faceless toys teach children from a very young age to focus on what's inside rather than outside. By stripping toys of facial features, the community aims to steer children away from vanity and pride, ensuring they don't develop a preoccupation with physical appearance. The absence of a drawn face forces a child to use their imagination to envision the expressions and feelings of their playmates made of cloth and wood. This not only enhances their creative skills, but also deepens their cognitive abilities. It's a unique way of fostering creativity where each child projects their thoughts and emotions onto the toys, making each playtime a rich, imaginative experience. These toys, devoid of detailed features, become beloved companions in both play and life, teaching Amish children the cultural ethos of their community through every interaction. Number 19, Weird Wedding Night Customs. Wedding bells in the Amish community don't ring quite the same way they do elsewhere. While many couples look forward to a private romantic celebration to start their married life, Amish newlyweds have a different take on post-wedding traditions. Instead of heading off to a secluded honeymoon, they go straight to where the heart is, home, specifically the bride's family home. Here's where it gets interesting. These first few days are not about relaxation or escape. Amish couples dive right into household chores alongside their new in-laws. From scrubbing floors to preparing meals, their wedding night and subsequent days are filled with activities that are far from the leisure most new couples might expect. This isn't just about keeping busy, it's a profound expression of their values. This communal living setup immediately after the wedding isn't just for bonding, but also serves as a solid foundation for the marriage. It highlights the importance of family, hard work, and shared responsibilities right from the start. By participating in daily chores, Amish couples show their readiness to embrace both the joys and duties of married life. Moreover, this tradition strengthens familial ties and ensures that the couple is well integrated into the wider family network. To those outside the Amish world, these customs might seem unusual, but within the community, they reinforce a lifelong commitment to the values of humility, hard work, and togetherness. Number 18, Rumspringa. In the typically reserved and sheltered Amish community, there is a fascinating exception known as Rumspringa. This tradition allows young Amish women, starting around the age of 16, to temporarily step away from their traditional lifestyle and explore the modern world. Rumspringa, translated from Pennsylvania Dutch, means running around or wilderness journey and it's a period of exploration and freedom. During Rumspringa, young Amish women experience life outside their community's confines. They can use modern technology, wear non-Amish clothing, and engage in activities that would normally be off limits. This temporary freedom is designed to help them make informed choices about their future. This period is crucial for self-discovery and decision-making. It allows these young women to explore different lifestyles and decide whether they want to remain within the Amish community or pursue a different path. Unlike other aspects of Amish life, Rumspringa is not governed by strict rules or timelines. There is no set duration, and individuals are free to return to the community 
or remain outside as they see fit. This flexibility provides personal autonomy and empowers individual decision-making. Some may choose to embrace the modern world and leave the community permanently, while others may return and reaffirm their commitment to the Amish way of life. Regardless of the outcome, Rumspringa is a significant rite of passage and a formative experience, highlighting the Amish commitment to personal choice and autonomy. Number 17, Total Submission. In the Amish community, the concept of submission in marriage isn't just a practice, but a deeply ingrained principle. Guided by biblical teachings, Amish women are raised to embrace a role where they defer to their husbands as the leaders of the household. This practice of submission is not merely about obedience, but is considered a reflection of their spiritual beliefs and commitment to family unity. From an early age, Amish girls are taught to value a meek and quiet spirit, qualities highly esteemed within their culture. These teachings are supported by biblical verses, which are woven into the fabric of their daily lives, reinforcing the idea that women should revere and submit to their husbands. This perspective shapes their behavior, their relationships, and their overall approach to life within their community. In practical terms, this means Amish wives often consult their husbands for guidance and approval on all major decisions, from managing finances to family planning and household management. Their day-to-day -day lives heavily involve homemaking and child-rearing, roles they view as vital to their identity and contributions to the family's well-being. While the outside world might view such total submission as restrictive, within the Amish community, it's upheld as a cherished value that reinforces the family structure. Number 16, no technology. In the rolling landscapes where the Amish communities thrive, you'll find a lifestyle markedly different from the modern world. Here, there's no buzz of smartphones, no glow of television screens. The Amish live entirely without modern technology, including basic electricity. This isn't just about shunning the latest gadgets. It's a deep-rooted commitment to maintaining a life of simplicity, family, and faith. For the Amish, modern devices represent a distraction from what they hold most dear close-knit community ties, and a life centered around their beliefs and daily manual labor. Imagine life without an electric stove or a light switch. Amish homes are equipped with gas lamps and wood-burning stoves, tools that keep them connected to a way of life that values hands-on work and resourcefulness. Exceptions exist, of course. For essential tasks like business transactions or urgent medical needs, some Amish might temporarily adopt modern tools but such instances are rare and carefully considered. Choosing this path in today's technology-driven world might seem extreme, but for the Amish, it's a way to preserve a way of life that deeply values sustainability, self-sufficiency, and spiritual enrichment over fleeting modern conveniences. Number 15, they can't divorce. In the Amish community, marriage is more than a union. It's a lifelong commitment that's not to be undone. Till death do us part isn't just a phrase. It's a strict guideline that governs marital bonds, with divorce not just frowned upon, but virtually absent within their traditions. For the Amish, the concept of marriage is deeply entwined with their religious and cultural beliefs. There's no provision for divorce in their framework. This rule isn't merely about maintaining social order, it's about upholding a spiritual vow that is considered sacred and unbreakable. Now imagine the consequences for someone in the community who considers divorce. It's not an understatement to say their world would turn upside down. Divorce is so heavily stigmatized that anyone pursuing it risks complete ostracization. Being cut off from one's family, friends, and the wider Amish support system is a daunting prospect. This form of social exclusion known as shunning, acts as a powerful deterrent, maintaining the community's incredibly low divorce rates. While the formal incidence of divorce remains low, it's noteworthy that separations, though not officially recognized, are slowly becoming more visible within the community. These separations indicate a subtle shift as some individuals navigate their need for personal happiness against the backdrop of strict communal rules. Number 14, 
no reproductive education. In the Amish community, the topic of reproductive education is handled with a unique blend of secrecy and subtlety. Unlike the typical curriculum in many schools around the world, Amish schools avoid any explicit discussions about human reproduction. Instead, they focus on basic biological concepts, steering clear of any details that might be considered too intimate or improper, according to their moral values. Why this veil of secrecy? It's all about maintaining purity and discretion within the community. The Amish place a high value on modesty and the sanctity of marriage. They believe that early exposure to detailed reproductive information could lead to conversations that might be viewed as promiscuous or inappropriate. By minimizing these discussions, they aim to protect their children from what they consider worldly influences, thus preserving a sense of innocence. Marriage within the Amish culture is not just a union, but a sacred commitment ordained by God. The community's approach to limiting talk about reproduction is also a way to emphasize the importance of this institution, particularly in the context of having children. The Amish stress that bringing new life into the world should occur within the bounds of marriage, reinforcing traditional family values and the spiritual significance of procreation. Interestingly, Despite the lack of formal education on the subject, young Amish individuals still gather knowledge about reproduction through indirect means. Observing the natural processes in farm animals and discreet conversations with elders allows them to draw parallels to human life. Number 13, no birth control. In the heart of the Amish community, where the clip-clop of horse-drawn buggies fills the air, a deep-seated belief flourishes. Every child is a divine blessing. This perspective is pivotal to understanding why birth control is a concept largely absent in Amish society. Rooted in their profound faith, the Amish see procreation not just as a part of life, but as a key purpose of marriage. The size of a family in this community is often large, and this is not by accident. To the Amish, a robust family unit is highly esteemed. It's common to see households bustling with the laughter and energy of seven to 10 children, each child regarded not just as another mouth to feed, but as a vital member contributing to the farm's operations and the household's needs. From the moment of marriage, an Amish couple is expected to embark on their journey of parenthood almost immediately. Postponing or opting out isn't typically in the cards. Such choices are often viewed through a moral lens with the community considering it contrary to the will of God and the natural order set by their faith. This unwavering stance is intertwined with the values of self-sufficiency and communal support that define the Amish way of life. Children are raised not only to adhere to religious doctrines, but also to shoulder responsibilities from a tender age. They work alongside adults, learning the ropes of agriculture and homemaking, ensuring that each generation is ingrained with the skills and ethos that have sustained their way of life for centuries. Number 12, no buttons for women. In the Amish community, fashion takes a backseat to faith, and nowhere is this more evident than in the wardrobe choices of Amish women. What's notably absent? Buttons. That's right, their traditional attire completely skips over buttons in favor of straight pins, hooks, and snaps. This isn't just a quirky fashion statement, it's a profound reflection of their deep-rooted values. Avoiding buttons does more than streamline their clothing. It stands as a rejection of showiness and excess. The Amish ethos is all about humility and simplicity, principles that are woven into every stitch and seam of their garments. By foregoing buttons, which might be seen as ornamental or flashy, Amish women make a powerful statement about their commitment to a modest lifestyle. This choice also embodies practical wisdom. Buttons are fiddly and often need fixing, which doesn't suit the Amish preference for durable, low-maintenance clothing. Pins and hooks, on the other hand, are straightforward and robust, perfect for their needs. While mainstream fashion celebrates individualism and self-expression through elaborate and often decorative clothing, Amish attire rejects this notion. It's a clear marker of identity that distinguishes them sharply from the wider world. Number 11, 
no higher education for women. The Amish world is a tapestry of tradition, and one thread that stands out is their approach to education. The Amish have kept this a secret for 90 years. For Amish girls, the path of learning takes an unexpected turn. At just 13 or 14, these young women bid farewell to the classroom forever. But why? It's not about holding them back. It's about preparing them for a life deeply rooted in their faith and community. The Amish believe that eight years of schooling provide all the academic tools needed for their way of life. Anything more? Well, that's seen as unnecessary and potentially disruptive to their carefully preserved culture. So what happens after eighth grade? The kitchen becomes the new classroom. Amish girls dive into a world of practical skills. They learn to manage a household, master traditional cooking, and perfect the art of quilt making. It's a hands-on education in becoming the backbone of an Amish family. But don't think for a second that their learning stops. These young women are absorbing the intricate social fabric of their community. They're learning patience, resourcefulness, and the delicate balance of communal living. Some might see this as limiting, but for the Amish, it's about focusing on what truly matters in their world. It's a choice to prioritize tradition, family, and faith over academic pursuits that might lead them away from their cherished way of life. Number 10, fluent in three languages. Step into the world of the Amish and you'll discover a community rich in language and culture. Surprisingly, both Amish men and women are often fluent in at least three distinct languages, which play a crucial role in their daily lives and interactions both within and outside their community. The primary tongue, Pennsylvania Dutch, a dialect stemming from German, resonates through their homes and gatherings. This language forms the heartbeat of day-to-day -day communication, connecting everyone in the community from the marketplace to the church pew. However, when stepping beyond their close-knit circles to interact with the broader world, English becomes essential. This language proficiency allows them to conduct business, pursue education, and communicate effectively with those not familiar with their traditional dialects. But there's more. High German, a more formal version of Pennsylvania Dutch, is reserved for religious observances and reading sacred texts. It's in this language that the Amish connect deeply with their faith, participating in church services and engaging with their spiritual heritage. This trilingual proficiency showcases the Amish community's adaptability and commitment to preserving their unique way of life while still engaging with the wider world. Number nine, women preachers are not allowed. Ever wonder why you won't see an Amish woman preaching from the pulpit? In this tight-knit community, church leadership is a men-only club. Ministers, bishops, pastors, all these roles are filled by men, no exceptions. But don't think for a second that Amish women are spiritually sidelined. They're the quiet powerhouses of faith in their homes and community. While they can't grab the mic on Sunday, they're busy shaping young minds in Sunday school and passing down spiritual wisdom to the next generation. Think of it like this. Men might be the face of the Amish faith, but women are its heart. They're the ones nurturing spiritual values at home, making sure the flame of devotion burns bright in every family. So while you won't see an Amish woman wearing a pastor's hat, her influence runs deep. She's the silent force keeping faith alive. One prayer, one lesson, one act of devotion at a time. Number eight, the barn raising tradition. In the heart of the Amish community, one of the most cherished traditions is barn raising. This event showcases the values of communal cooperation, hard work, and deep-rooted traditions. Men, women, and even children come together to build a barn in a single day, relying solely on human strength and traditional tools. The barn raising process starts well before the actual day, with careful planning and a set date. On the morning of the event, community members gather at the designated site, ready for a day of intense labor. Each person is assigned specific roles, ensuring that the work is organized and efficient. From constructing the framework to installing the roof, everyone has a vital part to play. This division of labor is key to the day's success. By assigning tasks to different groups, 
the community ensures that the barn raising progresses smoothly and efficiently. Traditional tools and manual labor are used exclusively, upholding techniques that have been passed down through generations. In a world dominated by modern technology, the Amish maintain their commitment to time-honored methods. As the sun sets and the barn stands tall and completed, the community gathers to reflect on their achievement. They share meals and stories, celebrating not just the physical structure they have built, but the spirit of cooperation and camaraderie that defines their way of life. Number seven, childbirths at home. In the Amish community, the arrival of a new baby is often greeted not in the sterile corridors of a hospital, but in the warm, familiar setting of home. This deeply rooted tradition is driven by several factors, including cost effectiveness, as many Amish families prefer the affordability of midwives over expensive hospital stays. Home births in the Amish culture are more than just a practical choice. They reflect a way of life. The close-knit nature of these communities means that childbirth is a family-centered event, with extended family members often playing a supportive role, enveloping the process in a communal embrace. The birthing process itself blends traditional knowledge with certain modern medical practices, focusing predominantly on natural delivery. Midwives, who are usually experienced members of the community, guide the mother through childbirth, sometimes using pain relief methods, but always prioritizing a natural approach. The presence of men is typically minimal during the birth, reflecting the Amish values of modesty and privacy. While this practice underscores the community's values of simplicity and self-sufficiency, it's not without its controversies, particularly regarding the risk of complications and the lack of immediate emergency care. Despite these concerns, for many Amish women, the experience of bringing a child into the world at home, surrounded by faith and family, is invaluable. Number six, shunning. In the Amish community, a unique and strict practice called shunning or Meidung in Pennsylvania Dutch plays a critical role. This isn't just about discipline. It's a profound ritualistic reminder for those who stray from their commitments to both their faith and community. Shunning is the community's way of expressing unwavering dedication to its spiritual and communal obligations. When someone deviates from the community's strict codes of conduct, the response is to exclude them. This exclusion is aimed not just at punishing, but at encouraging the individual to recognize their errors and seek redemption. However, being shunned means more than just a symbolic separation. It leads to actual banishment from the community. Friends and family must cease all interactions with the shunned person, leading to complete social isolation. The typical reasons for shunning include behaviors like failing to adhere to community rules or missing church services, both seen as signs of non-conformity. Before we move on, Here's today's subscriber's pick. Captured in this evocative image, a group of Amish women wade through the ocean, an unusual scene that hints at the secretive layers of the Amish community. Clad in traditional garb and bonnets, these women embody a lifestyle that holds tightly to customs and secrecy. Each bonnet not just a symbol of modesty, but a key to understanding their roles and beliefs. In the Amish culture, the bonnet is more than just headwear. It signifies adherence to biblical teachings and a commitment to a humble, unadorned lifestyle. The Amish have kept this a secret for 90 years, but each bonnet style and the manner it is worn can convey significant meaning, ranging from marital status to levels of adherence to community norms. Unmarried women often wear black bonnets, while married women switch to white marking their life transitions in the most visually subtle yet culturally profound ways. So what do you think is the marital status of these women? How do you feel about the tradition of wearing bonnets to signify marital status? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Number five, maturity before baptism. Within the Amish community, baptism holds a profound significance that transcends mere ritual. It marks a mature, personal commitment to the Christian faith. Unlike many Christian denominations where infants are baptized, the Amish make this spiritual journey in adulthood, reflecting deep-rooted values of personal choice and responsibility. From as early as 16 to as late as 25, Amish young adults decide for themselves whether to be baptized 
signaling a transition from adolescence into full community membership. This choice is not made lightly. Prior to baptism, there is a period of intensive preparation. The candidates undergo months of instruction and reflection under the guidance of church elders, delving deep into the tenets of their faith to ensure their commitment is informed and heartfelt. The baptism itself is a vivid and symbolic act. It typically takes place in a natural body of water, a creek or a stream, emphasizing purity and renewal. By being fully immersed in the water, the individual publicly declares their intention to live out their faith in every aspect of life, embracing the community's values and traditions wholeheartedly. It's a rite of passage that confirms an individual's readiness to accept the responsibilities of Amish life, affirming their commitment not only to their faith, but to the community that nurtures and supports them. Number four, compulsory attendance of community events. In the Amish community, showing up at community events isn't just encouraged, it's expected of everyone, no matter the occasion. These gatherings, fundamental to the Amish way of life, are called Gemeinschafts. They're essential for fostering togetherness and maintaining the strong social fabric of the community. Whether it's a spiritual service, a quilting bee, or an energetic barn raising, every member's attendance is mandatory. These events are the heartbeat of the community creating a space for renewing friendships, catching up, and building the communal bonds that define their way of life. Participation isn't only about socializing, it also has practical benefits. These gatherings ensure everyone stays connected and accountable. They're places where news travels and mutual support thrives, essential in a community where everyone relies on one another. Moreover, these events often serve as networking hubs, where business deals are struck, and importantly, where many young people meet their future spouses. Through these interactions, Amish women and men not only find partners, but also weave the social and economic ties that support their community's sustainability. By prioritizing attendance at Gemeinschafts, the Amish affirm their commitment to shared values and traditions, ensuring the community remains united and strong. Number three, wearing bonnets. When you envision an Amish woman, her bonnet likely stands out. This iconic headwear isn't just for style. It's steeped in deep cultural and religious significance. Wearing a bonnet is a daily visible sign of an Amish woman's commitment to the values of humility and modesty, principles deeply rooted in their faith and way of life. These bonnets, crafted from plain fabric, are designed not to attract attention, but to cover and modestly conceal the hair adhering to biblical teachings that value modesty in appearance. The practice also aligns with biblical instructions for women to cover their hair as a sign of respect and submission within their religious context. More than just a symbol, each bonnet tells a part of its wearer's story, reflecting her identity, beliefs, and status within the Amish community. The style, color, and specific manner in which the bonnet is worn communicate nuanced messages that are clearly understood among community members. Aside from their symbolic and communicative functions, bonnets serve practical purposes too. They protect against the sun and wind as Amish women go about their daily chores and outdoor activities. From the youngest girls to the eldest matriarchs, the bonnet is a constant in their lives, worn from childhood through old age. Number two, no dating. In the Amish community, courtship is a journey taken with utmost sincerity and respect for tradition. Unlike mainstream society where dating can be casual, the Amish have a structured approach that emphasizes purity, honor, and adherence to community values. From the onset, courtship is about preparing for a lifelong commitment, not merely a series of casual meetups. Amish young adults engage in a formal courtship process that's closely monitored and involves the whole family. This ensures that the relationship aligns with the deep-seated values of the community. Sexual purity is central to Amish courtship. Amish women in particular hold their chastity in high regard, viewing it as a sacred honor reserved for their future husbands. Families play a critical role in this process, assessing the couple's compatibility and overseeing their interactions to ensure they meet the community's strict standards of conduct. 
Couples spend time together in public or in family settings where they can get to know each other while still upholding the community's expectations of modesty. Even in private, precautions like the placement of a wooden wall between them in a shared bed ensure the preservation of their purity. The culmination of this careful courtship is a simple yet meaningful wedding ceremony attended by the entire community. Number one, no makeup. In the Amish community, simplicity extends beyond lifestyle and into personal grooming with a strict adherence to natural beauty. Amish women, in line with their traditions, do not wear makeup. This choice is deeply rooted in their values of modesty and humility. Unlike the modern beauty regime that often focuses on external enhancements, the Amish emphasis is on nurturing an inner quality, a meek and quiet spirit as extolled in scriptures. These women view the human body as God's creation, perfect in its natural state, and believe that altering their appearance with cosmetics goes against the divine design. Their approach to beauty is not about vanity, but about honoring the simplicity and purity of their faith. Makeup, with its implications of pride and self-focus, does not align with the Amish philosophy that values humility and the beauty of the heart above all. Furthermore, the practical aspects of Amish life play a role in this no-makeup tradition. Their days are filled with labor-intensive tasks where practicality and self-sufficiency are paramount. Makeup, which requires upkeep and expense, does not fit into this utilitarian lifestyle. However, this doesn't mean Amish women neglect their appearance. They keep their hair neatly styled and their clothing clean and tidy, maintaining a dignified presence that reflects their values and resilience. This distinctive approach to beauty highlights a broader ethos in Amish culture, where what matters most is not how they appear, but how they live and the values they cherish. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.